Matthew, everyday audiophile, music lover, beer enthusiast. Today, I want to talk about vacuum tubes. Not any one tube in particular, but in this case, so let's pour this real quick. In this case, a vacuum tube comparison. So it's not every day that you get the chance to listen to different types of tubes head on. I'm not talking about different manufacturers of a given tube like I've been doing right here with all of these 12 AU7s, more along the lines of different types, right? EL84, 6V6, 300B. Uh, these are very different tubes. About as different as it as it can be, right? You have the 300B, which is a directly heated triode, the 6V6, a tetrode, and then the EL84, which is a pentode. So not only are we looking at three different designs, but they are tubes that are were designed for different purposes. For a little bit of education, the 6v6 is actually the oldest of the three tube types being designed and released in 1936. The 300B made by Western Electric was uh, two years later in 1938. And then the EL84 about 20 years after that in the late 1950s, not really become super, super popular until the 1960s. Now, when the call went out, for this tube comparison, I knew I had to respond in kind. And that meant bringing my 6V6 and EL84 amps to this comparison. And not only that, we made sure to bring extra sacrificial speakers, so to speak, so that these other tube amps had time to warm up, so that they were ready to switch whenever we did this comparison. You know, it's not quite fair listening to a cold tube amp, those that kind of are in the hi-fi, in the no, it's, the tube amp usually sounds better after it's at least warmed up, you know, half an hour or so. Uh, these, these amps, though, the 6v6 that I reviewed recently in my EL84 monoblocks, they take about an hour to two hours to sound their best. Doesn't mean that they don't sound good as soon as you turn them on after a few minutes of letting the tubes warm up, but the bass tightens up a little bit on the EL84s. The mid-range gets a little bit more forward, a little bit more lush. And the 6V6s just continue down their path of, of technicality. Not clinical, just technically very precise. Now let's, let's, let's go ahead and switch over to this beer. I haven't touched on it yet. This is the Blue Owl Adjunct Professor Black. Yeah, there we go. It is a sour imperial stout, chocolate and orange. I've never had it before, nor have I ever had a sour stout. So let's see. Oh, that is quite nice. There is a lot of orange on that one for sure. All right, let's get down to business and talk tube comparison. The host, his name is Doug. He was very gracious in allowing a big group of us, about a dozen and a half overall, come and listen to the speakers at his house. He has a very nice system that is required in order to fully grasp the differences between these tubes. Some of it is very apparent, and some of it required more, more in-depth critical listening to really determine, you know, what, what am I listening to? But let's start on his stack. So from the digital side, he is running Rune. That is feeding into a Chord Dave. And from there, he's going to the Elikit, I think it's the Elikit 8600. That's a 300B integrated, but he is not using the volume on this integrated. He's actually using the preamp out on the Dave to serve as his preamp because the Elikit DIY kit, it does not have a remote control. Well, I do not blame him. I have the same issues with my Trial Lab Alpre 12AU7. Anyways, that feeds into the GR Research and Exoticas. 
And these are open baffle speakers. Last time I heard them was about a year ago, but I do remember them being very detailed, very transparent to the gear in front of it. And this is essential, right, for for really listening to to these components and making a truthful comparison between the three. Uh, on the power side, I do want to call this out. He did have the Nordost Cubase reference. This is their, you know, reference power conditioner. And uh, it's a beast <laughs> in both price and size. Uh, everything was plugged into it. And it was it was a glorious night. That's all I can really stay there. Let me have one more drink and let's start on those thoughts and how the night went. So we started out the evening or the afternoon with the 300B. Uh, the rules were pretty simple. Everyone got two tracks, and after everyone played their two tracks in the sweet spot, we switched amps. Now, the first group was pretty big, so unfortunately we only got to do the 300B and the 6V6. But let's talk about that. The His 300B is the it's the first time that i've heard it in over a decade so my memories of what that tube is are are pretty dated they're pretty old but with his speakers it was very interesting in the test track that's become a reference as of late which is the gun has no trigger by dirty projectors there are a few things that i listen for i listen for the bass i need it to be very tactile very precise I listen for the supporting vocals on either side. Really, how wide are they? How pinpoint accurate are they? Are they forward or behind the speakers? And then I listen for the main vocals in the center. All three of those really give me a good impression of the performance of a system at a high level. Sure, it's not the most technical. It doesn't really show how expansive a, a room is. I need a couple other tracks to assist me there, like the Equinox by uh, Gilad Hexelman, but at a high level, I love listening to it because I can really easily tell is bass integration good. Is are the highs laid back or super forward? How's that mid range? All of these things I can gather in about fifteen to thirty seconds of listening to that track. Although I do love listening to the whole thing. The 300 Bs here, in my opinion, and with some of the other listeners, was that it was a very expansive soundstage. I'm talking wall-to-wall -wall past the speakers, and in addition, fairly deep. Deeper than the wall, the back wall was. And that's super nice to see. In addition, these speakers did not project any image in front of the speakers. It always seemed to come from behind, but it was a very deep soundstage behind that. And that is, that was a first for me when I was listening to that track from Dirty Projectors. I'm usually used to that vocal being right up there, right up there in front, and then the supporting, you know, also right there with me. So to hear them further back, a good 10, 20 feet back, was very interesting. It was very soothing to listen to. Uh, the way that I told describe the speakers to Doug is that they're they're gentle. They just invite you into the music, and they just want you to sit there and listen and have a good time, which I did. I did enjoy it drastically. One area that the 300 Bs fall a little short, and this is this should come as no surprise to anyone that has a 300 B, is in the bass. The bass was there, and the bass was beautiful to listen to but it wasn't taut it wasn't very tight and well controlled and that's just a function of only having nine watts so you can't fault the 300b for it that's just the way that the tube is any single in a triode is going to have issues with controlling deep bass in any speaker but if we ignore that and we just look at how musical something is how nice it is to listen to you know, are you likely to just sit there and let the track play, or are you going to go and switch from track to track to track? These qualities are what made his 300B spectacular. Just lovely to listen to. Uh, like I said, I can usually get a good sense of a 
track, you know, my, my test track within 30 seconds or so, kind of make it my opinion. Uh, I had already made it my opinion. I just wanted to sit there and listen to the rest of it. So that was just wonderful to hear. And those thoughts were shared, you know, amongst everyone that was there, is that it was just such a lovely system to listen to. It wasn't bright in any way. It was near perfect. And I say near perfect because of that low end. And this is where we're going to switch to the 6v6. So there were a few things that were very readily apparent upon switching to the 6v6. And uh, I'm going to list two of them. One is the bass. The amount of bass that comes out of this amp with any speakers that I've tried is unbelievable. It is so tight. It is It controls it so well that you almost think you're listening to a solid state amp. Now it doesn't have the speed of a true solid state amp, but for tubes, it, it did make me second guess a few times like which amp is plugged in. I mean, this that's that's the, the, the stark difference. One area that was a little weird, the 300B where it had a wide sound stage the 6v6 was turned 90 degrees so instead of a landscape sound stage it was more of a portrait sound stage which is a little bit weird for me voices were a little bit higher now i wouldn't say they were freakishly high for me though it, some describe them as being a little bit too high a little artificially raised but definitely vocals that used to be coming from you know ear level here me sitting were a little bit more elevated. And to me, that was fine because, you know, usually singers are singing standing up. Uh, but for those that kind of felt that they were, you know, an eight foot tall singer, I can totally see the disconnect on, you know, that the musicality and, and really feeling involved with the music. That is definitely one area where the 6v6 amp fell short. It wasn't as musical. It didn't have that mid-range bloom that you get from a single and a triode. So in that sense, the 2A3 amps that I have would have been a closer comparison because they are like the the older brother of the of the 300B, right? Less watts, but same general philosophy in their design. Let's let's have a refill. This is really quite good. What else did I hear from the 6v6? It was, as you would expect, more extended in the highs, which is, again, is just a function of triode versus not triode tube. Additionally, the imaging was pinpoint accurate. And that is really, I think, a function of how well it was controlling the drivers. With the 300Bs, it kind of reminded me, because of the open baffle nature of these Anexoticas, of the Magnapans that I had listened to just a week prior. The images were precise enough that you could get a sense of where they were. They were lifelike in their size, is maybe the most apt description. If there was a singer singing on the you know right-hand side, the image had a size, if I closed my eyes, that was lifelike. With the 6v6, that image precision caused it to be a little bit more pinpoint. So you knew exactly where that voice was coming from, but it didn't quite have that lifelike portrayal that you were ju that you just got from the 300B. So in that sense, it was a little bit disappointing, right? Uh, I have been using this amplifier. It has kind of been my my reference as of late as I've really just tried to figure out how it sounds like. And you kind of forget what it is you're listening to unless you have other reference points. And that's where comparing it to the 300B here was just, was just wonderful. That pretty much sums up the 6V6 though. Uh, overall, I would say... If you could combine the 300B and the 6V6 and, into one tube, so you basically get the 40 watts of this amp, but the lushness and the lifelikeness and the musicality of the 300B, you'd probably have the perfect amp. And, and Doug, the host, said so himself. He agreed with that, with that statement. 
Later in the night, we finally got around to bringing the EL-84s in. And in my opinion, that was, for me, that was the star of the show. Not to downplay how impressive the EL, the, 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 not to downplay how impressive the 300Bs are because they were amazing to listen to. And I don't think anyone would feel like they need to change the tubes after listening to it. But the EL84s here, they had the extension in the highs that you wanted. They had deep bass grip due to those nice Hashimoto output transformers and the 26 watts that they deliver. They had a slight bump in the mid-range, similar to the 300B, but not quite the same. In fact, after listening for half of a track, Doug and I both agree that they were very similar tonally. Now, the 300B, I think, still won in like overall musicality, where you're listening to it and you're just closing your eyes and you're kind of in this dreamlike trance listening to just music flow out of the speakers. But the EL84, in my opinion, delivered on 90% of that promise while also giving really nice bass grip. It wasn't 6v6 bass grip, but it was, again, 90% of the way there. It... It did reach a little bit higher, I think, than the 6v6, but not so much so that you would be comparing one or the other. It just gave you some of that, you know, information above 8 to 10 to 11k that you may have thought you were missing in the 300B. And that's just my my opinion on it. Now, when we look at the imaging side of things, the EL84s, because they are true monoblocks were vastly superior to the 6v6 in my opinion and again a lot closer to uh, the 300bs they were still pinpoint images more precisely pronounced but they were a little bit more lifelike in their size and when i look at the depth and the width of that soundstage They, again, were closer to the 300Bs. They weren't quite as wide as the 300B, which is just amazing. That that tube had a soundstage that really went far beyond the speakers. The EL84 was close. I'm going to again say 90%. It's about 90% of everything. But the depth was all the way there. It had all the depth. It had the right height. It had almost all of the width. So in the sense of where things were in the soundstage... I think it was really quite close. And to me, the EL84 won the bout of the three because of its nice mix of the best of both of these amps. It had almost all the bass grip. It had the extended highs. It had almost all of that bloom in the center that's just so musical to listen to. And really, it just, at the end of the night, It got out of the way of the music. It just lets you enjoy what you're listening to, which again is why we're in this hobby in the first place. So I want to circle back and say, Doug, thank you so much for hosting. I really hope we can do this again in the future. And next time I want to bring the two A3s. I think it's a more fair comparison of 300 Bs. And... Having one amp to go back and forth is going to be a lot easier than switching between three. But it was a wonderful time. I think everyone really enjoyed it, and they really got a sense of how great Doug's system is. You really, you need a system that is so transparent to be able to hear these differences. And his is, and his hospitality was second to none. Ex- except for maybe James in that Christmas party. But <laughs> again... Thank you, and I will chat with y'all next time. See ya.